guys, welcome back. Odin managed to get his way, and I didn't see it coming. Son of a bitch, I just realized it right now, and I hear hysterical laughter back there. Welcome to the only channel where the pagan gods can play me like a freaking violin because I am just that stupid, and I fall for it every single fucking time. We were cooking late last night. And I have been so traumatized by the first half of that film, I thought, I really want to see somebody roast this film. And the film is called The Encounter, by the way, the Christian Jesus Diner movie. And it 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 really got roasted. And I thought, but they deserve it because they said Jesus believes in genocide. And I'm like, they deserved it for that. They really deserved to get the hell roasted all this movie. And it was just... They kept picking on things I picked up on, too. Like, why the hell does Jesus only serve water when he literally, in the Bible, did miracles to change water into wine and everything else? You can't, like, have water or wine. There's, like, no choice. I get it. The water of life, blah, blah, fucking blah. But I'm like, oh, it's so terrible. And apparently I pieced out the right time because it only went downhill from there. It just, it got terrible. I will not scar you psychologically. Well, the same people did two more podcasts, and they did a podcast on the movie of The Shack, which I'd read the book, but I'd never saw the movie, because I'm like, I just want to make sure I've I've checked out the current scene and made sure I know everything that's going on, and then I can, you know, let it go. And they were absolutely roasting this film, too, which I hadn't seen the film, like I said, but I read the book, and it sounded like a play-by-play -play of the book, which... Other than the shitty theology, I actually didn't mind the book. It was like you were so fucking close to a touchdown, and then you fucking dropped the ball. Do you realize you just contradicted yourself? Because in there, it's the story is basically a father had been abused as a child. Tried to poison his father. You never find out if he killed the father or not. Runs away, grows up, and ends up having his own family. Taken the camping, daughter gets kidnapped by a serial killer. His journey is going to be to forgive himself, to forgive his father, um, and to forgive the serial killer. <laughs> and I'd be off the door like, nah, fuck that shit, I ain't going to no fucking shack. I'll burn it down, you want me to do that? But, um, this was what God wanted. And as I told you when we read the book, nothing changed. God is a black woman. I, I make no judgments. I don't care who you think God is or what God looks like. And so much of the book that should have been in the film, because it would have helped a little, um, was not there. I kept thinking, it's a damn good thing I read the book. It's a damn good thing I read the book, because this fucking film didn't make any sense. Standing on its own, if you saw it, you would be confused. But basically, it contradicts itself. And the logical flaw in this film is God loves everyone. Everyone. Everyone has gone to heaven. Everyone and ever. Same kind of thing the UU Church teaches. Only... This world is as fucked up as it is because Adam and Eve have poor decision-making skills and mankind is broken. And this all-powerful, omnipotent God will not fix it because that was totally free will to go over there and get the fruit I told them not to get. And I'm like, you put two fucking innocent people without reasoning and logic skills and the knowledge of good and evil, right and wrong, whatever you want to call it, in a fucking garden and you said don't touch that one plant over there. What the fuck you think are going to do? I'm not sure if you're omnipotent and mysterious or just fucking stupid and you suck at running creation. <laughs> I'm going, yeah, back here. And that's what pissed me off because basically the God in this film loves you. You're not going to hell, but the God in this film ain't going to do jack shit for you either. You're getting attacked. You're getting... um you know, misfortune in your life, you're dying of something, don't call on this god, because this god's got a plan, that's why your life fucking sucks, and I'm like, this was supposed to make me feel better? But Odin had tricked me into watching this this morning, because I had been laughing my ass off at the podcast, and Odin started acting like he felt bad for god being kicked when he was down. <laughs> 
<laughs> and don't give two shits that goes on his own. <laughs> Half the time you can't trust o Odin is wonderful. Odin is very loving, sweet, and kind. At the same time, he's a trickster and can't fucking trust him with Loki half the time. So, of course, he's he's uh, going to take advantage where he can. And I think he wanted me to see it just to get totally put any Jesus crazies to the rest and go, see, these people can't fucking agree. And I went and I looked up the reviews for it, and most of the people that hated it either hated it because they thought it was Christian propaganda, which it is, because they want to get you back into church. It was weird because Jesus in the film said he hates religion, but you have to know enough fucking religion to know who Jesus is and what original sin is. But he doesn't need you to go to church, but this guy ends up going to church for the rest of his life. <laughs> Pick a fucking lane. And oh, by the way, the most asshole thing God did in this movie, I might as well tell you, is this guy was almost in a crash going to this cabin to meet Papa, which is what God is called in this film. He's almost in a crashy spirit. I'm like, oh, it's a miracle. God puts him back in a total dick move. God puts him back right before the crash and the guy's in the crash. I'm like, is this God's fucking mysterious ways? Because how the fuck difficult would it have been to let this dude leave the cabin because in the first part he drives up to the cabin I'm like this doesn't make fucking sense did he hallucinate did he have a stroke did he have an out of body experience they never actually explain it I'm like I'm not even fucking sure this is Christianity because God's a black woman Jesus looks more Arab than you know um, Jewish and which I don't care. Do you do you? And the Holy Spirit is Oriental, and I couldn't tell you who Wisdom was. I wasn't. I wasn't sure. Caucasian lady in a cave is who Wisdom was. <laughs> laughter back here, house of laughter. And there's just so many m moments in that film that are so fucking painful. I'm like, what kind of loving God would do this to you? Because he's in this cave of Wisdom. He's tormented and told to basically pick one of his children to go to hell. Because God's making a point, so God's going to be a bitch about it. And he can't pick either of his children, okay? Like, who the fuck could? And then finally he breaks down, he's crying, he's sobbing, he's like, Take me! Take me! Don't take my babies! Take me! And God, you know, wisdom's like, well, now you know God's heart. God can't send any of his children to hell. I'm like, not even fucking Hitler? Serial killers? Rapists? Nobody? Not even for like a while? I could get that. God might think eternity's harsh. But like for a fucking while to get their shit together? No? Okay. Okay, good. I'm, gl I'm glad we're, we're, we're on the same page here. And there's this waterfall that appears. And... I thought Jesus was a dick in the book, and I think he's a bigger dick now. <laughs> You're going to hell! <laughs> this man is looking through this waterfall, and he sees his dead daughter. She's running around in a field with all these other kids playing. Why the hell are there always fields and everything in these movies? I don't know. But she runs up to the waterfall. She cannot see or hear him, but she knows he's there. And he can't communicate to her. I'm like, that is so fucking cruel. Why not split the waterfall and let them reunite for three minutes in some kind of touch by an angel bullshit? And as he's trying to spend this precious moment with his daughter, Jesus comes and calls his daughter away. I'm like, Jesus, you are a fucking dick in this film. That man is trying to see his child, and you come and you call her away. You, sir, are a dick. And I'm like, why the fuck didn't he get to, like, what the fuck? What was this waterfall supposed to represent? And I was just so angry by the end of the film. I was, like, chewing on the inside of my mouth, and now my mouth fucking hurts. And I couldn't figure out why I was doing that, because I was trying not to grip my teeth, that's why. And I just got so pissed off, and Odin's like, let all the angry out. Your whole life, you've been told not to be angry at the church, or God, or Jesus, or anyone. This really isn't at God, or Jesus, whomever they may be. It's about this manipulative exposition of, yeah, your life fucking sucks, but God loves you, so touch it. And I'm like, how the fuck is that supposed to comfort anyone? It should be you know, at least they used to say stuff like times are tough, but the storm will pass. 
you know, God has a plan for you. It didn't always make fucking sense back then either, but at least it sounded better than, yeah, God's letting serial killers and rapists and everything roam the, um, world because free will. And I'm like, okay, I could actually reach an agreement with you on free will. But explain the natural disasters. Well, because... The world is broken because Adam and Eve, you mean two fucking infants you put in a garden and told them don't touch that thing? Did you ever have children? Because the one thing you tell them not to touch, that's going to be the shit they're going to touch. And I was like, <sighs> and I know the stories in the Bible are a metaphor, which was what was strange. This Jesus insisted you believe in original sin and Adam and Eve fucked everything up, which is why this planet is so shitty and everything is man's fault and god can't interfere be interfere to help us because free will i mean god can't like sneak in and like cure cancer or something and i'm like i'm like one more of these fucking films and i will be a full-fledged atheist i really will and you know for for people that loved it great for them but i'm like it's just, there's always going to be that part in me that looks at these kind of teachings and goes, nah. And Odin and Loki wanted all the angry out of me because Loki was behind me helping. He's like, God is fat, Loki. Well, if God could be anything God wanted, why isn't God attractive, Loki? I don't know, I'm just saying God is fat. Why is God black? Ugh, because they're making a point. God is a black woman because they are making a point. Which is? God's not an old white man. So he's a frumpy looking black man? I mean, she is? Will you shut up? No! When did God become a black woman? Like, I don't fucking know, okay? And by the end of the film, I thought it was like Old Man Coyote, like one of the Voodoo on Loa, and a couple other things. I was fucking confused, but I'm like. I had such high hopes for it. I thought that maybe they took the theological problems of the book, fucking fixed them before they made it into a movie. Because I've always thought that the book felt like a rough draft because there are logical fallacies in it that surely they would go back and fix, right? Like, God can't have you believe he's all love and you will never be punished, but you have to believe in original sin. Why does original sin matter if I will never be punished? And then, wait, why did, why did Jesus die then if nothing matters i ain't confused so <laughs> i was confused and pissed off and biting my cheek and now now i'm cranky because i expected it'd be a nice sunny day and i thought oh t-shirt's supposed to eventually come in today and i would go for a walk and get a burger to celebrate but nope no fucking t-shirt so if you guys like what you see like comment subscribe and i will see you later Bye bye